So this bad boy here is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. It's a fresh new version of the S20 flagship that's not quite as good, but it's also a bit cheaper, and who doesn't like saving money? Samsung designed the Fan Edition using direct feedback from Galaxy users, while also streaming out some of the super premium features from the S20 in order to reach a more accessible asking price. Although it still definitely couldn't ever be described as affordable, because the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition starts from 599 quid for the 4G version and 699 pounds for the 5G model. The Fan Edition goes on sale from the 2nd of October here in Blighty and you'll get a free gift if you pre-order or buy it before the 27th of October, namely three months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and a Morga XP5 X Plus controller or a Galaxy Fit 2 fitness tracker, whichever you prefer. Now I've had my mitts all over the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition ahead of the official launch, so here's my early hands-on review, how it stacks up for the specs and everything, and also how it compares with the original, regular, ready-salted S20 flagship phone. And for more than the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now the first element of the design that really strikes you is the rather stunning range of colours, because the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition comes in a selection of very bright finishes indeed. You've got a choice of red, lavender, mint and orange, and also white and a very dark navy as well if you don't want to dazzle everyone as you're strutting down the street. Personally though, I really love those super bright poppy colours, if only because they momentarily distract you from how absolutely f***ing awful everything is right now. Gotta say, I really like that bright, bold red finish, and I'm also a fan of the mint and the orange efforts as well. They're a bit more subtle, not quite as punchy, but definitely if you want a bit of colour, they're the ones to go for. As far as the construction goes, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition sports a Series 7000 aluminium frame, while up front you've got a Gorilla Glass 3 Corton, but there is no Gorilla action on the arse end, unlike the regular S20. What you get here instead is a glastic finish, as Samsung terms it, which is basically a fusion of glass and plastic. It's the same stuff they use for the likes of the Galaxy A51 and A71 mid-range smartphones. The matte surfacing does at least mean that fingerprint smears aren't a problem, even after you've scoffed the most delectable of deep-fried goodies from that slightly dodgy food van parked outside the local disco. And you may not have the latest tough-as-nails Gorilla Glass Corton front and back, but at least the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition is fully IP68 water and dust resistant. So no change on that front from the standard regular S20 flagship. On the software side of things, not much has changed there either. Either you once again get Android 10 with the latest One UI 2.5 lovingly smushed on top, adding a bugger ton of bonus features on top of Google's OS. This does of course come with the usual duplicate Samsung apps and of course alternatives to standard Google features, so for instance you'll have Samsung Pay instead of Google Pay. But you do also get plenty of great stuff in there like Samsung's Knox security suite to help keep your privates very private. Speaking of which, the S20 Fan Edition sticks once again with an in-screen fingerprint sensor and that is once again joined by some swift and accurate face and lock action too. You've got Samsung's very decent gaming mode, you've got plenty of one-handed help and all kinds of other great bits chucked in there. But I won't bang on about it all right here. If you want a closer look at the software smarts then go check out my full One UI 2.5 tips and tricks guide which is live right now. And there's no change on the storage front here. You once again have 128 gigabytes of UFS 3.0 storage so it's reasonably nippy and that can be expanded once again in a jiffy using a micro SD memory card up to one terabyte in size. Now let's have a shifty at that display and here it's a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED panel, so it's actually closer in size to the S20 Plus rather than the regular flagship. However, the Fan Edition uses a Full HD Plus resolution 2400 by 1080 not full on Quad HD Plus like the flagship S20s, but those visuals are still plenty crisp when you're streaming a lovely bit of video or checking out your pics. As usual, you've got Full HDR supports, so you can enjoy realistic colours and sharp contrast on supported content, or alternatively you can just boost the colours right up if you want to make every everything really pop. And apologies in advance if you're a certified hater of camera orifices, because the S20 Fan Edition once again sports Samsung's Infinity O design, with a camera slapped bang in the centre of that panel. As with the all regular S20, you've got a 120Hz refresh rate here on the Fan Edition too, so scrolling through apps and websites and the like is a silky smooth beautiful experience, and at least here on the Fan Edition you don't have to choose between that 120Hz refresh rate and the Quad HD Plus resolution, because there ain't no Quad HD. And the S20 FE also supports 240Hz touch response rate as well when you're playing supported games. As for the audio, well you once again thankfully get a stereo speaker set up here on the S20 Fan Edition, pumping out some quite crisp, clear and quite powerful audio on that top volume as well, with full Dolby Atmos support on top. And to any new viewers, well Christ, I'm just sorry for everything you're about to witness. And although it's no real surprise, it is slightly annoying that there is no headphone jack, but you do at least get full Bluetooth 5.1 support. 
Now, if you're a bit of a cheap ass and you go for that 4G LTE version, well, the bad news is you will be stuck with Samsung's Exodus 990 chipset as we were all cursed with here in the UK in the standard S20. But if you actually stump up for that 5G model, then the great news is you will actually get the Snapdragon 865 just like our American cousins. Hallelujah, I am ready to drop to my knees and thank and praise the baby Jesus. And whether you choose 4G or 5G, you get six gigs of DDR5 RAM stuffed in inside there as well so a bit down from the 8 gigs in the standard S20 but should still keep you ticking over nicely where you're multitasking game and whatever you're up to and if you throw the extra cash at Samsung for that 5G model well of course unsurprisingly you get a 5G modem packed in there as well because there isn't a 5G modem built into the 865 chip and the S20 fan edition supports sub 6 as well as millimeter wave 5G as well so you're well and truly future proofed especially when you consider you got a bit of Wi-Fi 6 packed in there too and on the battery life front you've got a 4500 milliamp cell which should deliver Deliver all day battery life as long as you get the Snapdragon 865 model, no worries. And the Fan Edition supports up to 25 watt wired charging, although unfortunately you only get a 15 watt charger bundled in the box with this phone, which is kind of a shame considering how much cash are actually thrown at Samsung to begin with. And you've also got support for pretty nippy 15 watt wireless charging if you've got yourself a wireless charging pad. So let's finish up with a quick squint at the Fan Edition's camera tech, and you once again have a triple lens setup just like those flagship phones, but it's not quite the same hardware here. What you get is a 12 megapixel primary lens with optical image stabilization built in, backed up by a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and also a telephoto lens, but this time it's only an 8 megapixel effort rather than the mighty 64 megapixel telephoto lens on the vanilla S20. But the good news is you do at least get a 3 times optical zoom, and you've got optical image stabilization built into that telephoto lens too. And you can pinch in beyond the 3 times level using Samsung's space zoom feature, which maxes out at a 30 times hybrid zoom. And yeah, things do get quite grainy once you hit that 30 times zoom level, but if you're a bit more restrained, the zoom chops are pretty solid. Now the camera UI on the Fan Edition is very similar to the flagships, but you don't quite get all of the same features and functionality. If you look beyond the auto mode, you've got the likes of the night modes, and using this, the Fan Edition will shoot between 40 and 30 images at different exposure levels, and then combine them for a more balanced overall image. And the single take feature is back in action, first introduced of course on the S20, and you can record between 3 to 15 seconds of video, and then it'll produce a selection of stills and different effects. You've also once again got live focus for your photos and also your video, and on the video side you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second, with full support for the likes of HDR as well, but there is no 8K option on the Fan Edition. Although to be fair, if you've already bought yourself an 8K TV, chances are you won't be looking at this version of the S20 flagship phone, you'll already probably have an Ultra and about 3 Pluses stuffed into every pocket. And last up, housed in that aforementioned Infinity Orifice is a 32 megapixel front feature and camera. And this should be just as dependable as ever for all of your Instagram action and also for once again shooting up to 4K resolution movies. So that's what you can expect from Samsung's new Galaxy S20 Fan Edition smartphone. As I said, still not very affordable, but at least it does trim down the price of the S20 a little bit while also cutting out some of the features that most people probably wouldn't be that bothered about, like a Quad HD Plus resolution and the crazy 64 megapixel telephoto camera. Of course, it's also got very strong competition from all kinds of great mid-range smartphones, many of which which boasts 5G support for under £400 these days. So be interested to hear your own particular thoughts. Are you tempted by the Fan Edition? If not, why not be great to hear? Please do slap that down in the comments below and stay tuned, hopefully, for my full review coming soon. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest greatest tech and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.